Parallel quests are a huge part of the Xenoverse 2 experience, especially considering there's a hundred of them in the base game, with 58 more of them having been added so far as DLC. And as of this upload, we're still waiting on DLC 16 to drop, which is going to push that extra number to over 60. In this video, I'm going to break down the best ways to tackle these quests, and by the end of it, you should be able to breeze through them all. So first up, let's talk about how you should set up your CAC in order to deal tons of damage quickly. First off, I do suggest that you use a pure Key Blast build as they do the most damage, and in order to do the most damage, I definitely recommend you go for 125 points in your Key Blast skills. The way that you distribute the rest of your points isn't exactly detrimental to this strategy, but putting the rest into Key and Basic Attack is what I'd recommend most. The best races for this would include Saiyans, in general really, female Earthlings, and Frieza race characters. However, you're free to use whatever type of character your heart desires. Now, as per Awoken skills, if you're playing as a Saiyan, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution has the highest damage buffs in the entire game, with a 35% boost to all of your attacks, at the expense of a bit of a key drain. Now, you will likely want to pair specific Super Souls that have key auto recovery with this form, but we'll go over that more here in just a sec. If you're playing as a Frieza race, it's up to you whether you want to use Turn Golden or Beast, as they both provide a 30% boost to your key blast attacks, but be aware that Beast will provide a 30% boost to all other attack categories, while Golden will not. Beast also has a unique combo string that gives Frieza's a consistent stamina break, and if you're playing as any other race, then Beast is honestly going to be your best bet. As for your super attacks, there's really only two things that you need to bring along, and that's bending Kamehameha and a charge skill. Preferably, you're going to go with ultimate charge, but if you don't have the DLC for it, then you're going to be stuck with maximum charge instead. Bending Kamehameha is a very reliable move that you can throw out there pretty much at any time. The tracking is very solid on this move, thanks to its homing feature that you can activate by pressing its designated button twice. The attack can easily connect from a standstill and is basically guaranteed off of a knockaway. Also, it does all of its damage in one hit, so if it prompts the evasive, it doesn't do the AI any good and they just end up throwing their stamina away in vain. Otherwise, feel free to fill up the remaining super slots with whatever you want, but I'll throw out a few suggestions out there for you just in case you find yourself stumped here. If you're a Saiyan, Big Bang Kamehameha is a solid choice to mix things up, as if you fully charge it, it will teleport behind the opponent, and the blast has a very wide range, making it almost impossible for the AI to escape. Otherwise, Bomber DX works really well with one of the ults I'm going to be mentioning here momentarily, and Times 10 Kamehameha is a solid move that does a ton of damage, works great off of knockbacks and knockdown combos, and it can teleport with Super Saiyan types of transformations. However, it will require two bars of key, as opposed to everything else that I mentioned only requiring one. Alright, let's move on to some ultimate attacks now. There are three that I believe to be the most functional, so pick whichever two you like the sound of best here. First, I'll talk about Emperor's Death Beam. It comes out extremely fast and will do a ton of damage at the exchange of all the key that you have available when you launch the move. And it's very good at taking out enemies that you need to deal with quickly, and is really good at getting those pesky Ultra Instinct Gokus and Dragon Ball Super Brolies out of the way. Super Spirit Bomb is another really good ultimate that most AI aren't too privy on how to deal with. They don't really seem to know that they need to grab you in order to stop you from launching the move. Now, there is still a chance that they might grab you out of the attack, but these odds seem to be pretty low. So, ultimately, you might lose a little bit of HP while they're sitting there trying to heavy smash you out of it, but generally that's the worst that's going to happen. Also, this is the ultimate that I was talking about earlier that combos amazingly with Bomber DX. Considering how the move lasts for a long time, holds them down in place, Bomber DX mixed with Super Spirit Bomb just shreds HP. And lastly here, I'd like to talk about Elegant Blaster. Now this move isn't necessarily for its combo ability or for its damage. 
This one is mainly here for defensive purposes as it forces everyone to lock off of you. Now there is an evasive that we're going to be going over here in just a sec that you could use to replace this if you want. So let's go on ahead and segue into the evasive skills now. And once again, I've got three that I think work the best, so choose the one you like the sound of the most. Mock Dash is an obvious choice as it will bail you out of any situation while giving you a boost to your movement speed for a short period of time afterwards. Super Explosive Wave is excellent at getting you out of basic attack combos while doing damage at the same time. This is one of the most damaging evasives in the game, which is the main reason why I decided to include it here. And last up, we have Psycho Escape, which is what I believe to be the replacement for Elegant Blaster. This move will freeze your opponent in place, but only if you are close enough. You will then run away to safety, and if you connect with the Paralyzing Beam part of it, it will also force the opponent to lock off of you, much like what Elegant Blaster does. But if you miss, that's not going to happen, unlike with Elegant Blaster, where all you need to do is launch the move. So I'd say pick between Elegant Blaster or Psycho Escape. One other important thing to note about Psycho Escape is that it does give the opponent iframes if they get caught in it, so just bear that in mind. So now that we've covered all of the most effective skills, let's start covering some of the most effective Super Souls here. For most situations, I would suggest using I've cast aside everything for this. The main reason is because it increases all of your damage by 35% for the entire match. Now, this Super Soul might come with downsides, but most of them are negligible or are very easy to work around in the PvE setting. If you decide to use Blue or Blue Evolution, I'd recommend using Right Then, Let's Begin the Experiment, as it still gives a significant boost to your Key Blasts at 20%, while completely negating the form's Key Drain to the point where you actually still have some Key Auto Recovery in effect. You may need to keep your HP above 75%, but with the use of healing items, this is an easy task. Both of these Super Souls that I've just mentioned are DLC exclusive, so if you don't have access to them, I've come up with a few Super Souls that you can use in their place. The following three I'm about to mention are all found in the TP Metal Shop, so if you don't see them there, check back every Saturday, as that's when the TP Metal Shop cycles out for new items. But anyway, the Super Souls you're looking for in there are You Honestly Thought You Could Beat Me, whose main draw is boosting all of your attacks by 20%. Now, you do have to keep your HP up here again, but that's easy to do with healing items. There's also You Irritating Little Pests, which boosts the amount of damage your super attacks do by 20%, which is going to be your primary form of damage anyway. And this Super Soul actually comes with an added bonus of having an attack boosting limit burst. And the third one here, we've got You and this entire planet are as good as Space Dust. This Super Soul is going to require you to either have Gallic Gun or Earth Splitting Gallic Gun equipped to your character. This Super Soul inherently boosts the damage of those two skills by 20%, and for the first six uses of those moves, they will boost all of your other Key Blast skills by 5% each for a maximum total of 30% which equates to 50% for your Gallic Gun Supers. And I've got one more Super Soul I'd like to mention here that came in the Cell Max raids that we had going on not too long ago, and that's Damn. Gonna have to go all out. It takes 60 seconds to activate, but in a parallel quest, that's not really a very big deal. And after those 60 seconds are up, it will boost all of your damage and your movement speed by 25%, However, you will be taking 10% more damage for the whole quest, which is a very workable side effect, again, thanks to healing items. And speaking of healing items here, this portion of the video is pretty self-explanatory, but what I have displayed up on screen here is what I believe to be the best healing items in the game. This setup will give you the most HP to work with possible. Now, as I'm sure you know, whenever you're doing parallel quests offline, you can bring along two NPC teammates. And it is actually possible to bring along some of your other CACs to fight with you. And believe it or not, 
The way you set up your NPC teammates is just about as important as the way you set yourself up, at least as far as the Super Soul is concerned here. The Super Soul we're looking at is called Hercule. Hercule. This Super Soul is a raid exclusive item that's come around three, maybe four times tops. And ideally, you're going to want to have two of these Super Souls handy to put on two other different CACs of yours to bring along into parallel quests. What this Super Soul does is increase the damage of your whole team's attacks by 5% each time an ally of the user gets a KO. This means each time the player gets a KO, damage is increased by 10% for a potential maximum of a 100% increase by the time you reach the end of these longer parallel quests. That's double the damage. Be aware that if one of your teammates gets the KO instead of you, that means only one of the Super Souls is going to activate instead of both, since it depends on the KOs of the allies of the equipped user. In the unfortunate event that you only have one or even zero copies of this Super Soul, you can equip it to Custom Pan, Videl, or Hercule instead. So if you're in that group of people who is fortunate enough to equip the Hercule, Hercule Super Soul to one or even both of your CACs, let's start going over some skills that you're going to want to equip to those characters in order to make them the most effective. Personally, I think the best way to go about it is to equip super attacks that have the added bonus of stamina breaking the opponent. These moves include Evil Ray Strike, Prelude to Destruction, God of Destruction's Anger, and Dodoria Headbutt. Now, all of these moves are pretty great. Most of them, except for Evil Ray Strike, have some sort of fairly long animation tied to them. So it keeps your teammates out of trouble while potentially getting your enemies into trouble. Now, there are plenty of other moves here that can definitely help you out. There's a handful of moves that will either stun the opponent or keep them locked in some animations. And these moves include Dancing Para Para, Dust Attack, Solar Flare, and Time Control. All of these moves are solid as if they land. It's basically just going to leave the opponent open for some free damage. Now, there are also a couple of defensive options that you could choose if you decide that you would rather have your teammates be more tanky, so that way they can stay conscious and actually get the Super Soul effect. Super Guard and Backflip are two options that you might consider. Now, also, a really good defensive strategy that can help keep opponents off of you is Taunt. So, if that's something you're having some trouble with, or if you would like to have opponents locked onto you as infrequently as possible, Taunt is a good way to go. And along the same lines here, talking about some ultimates, there's really not too many, but the Savior Has Come does something very similar to Taunt, except it will force all opponents to lock on to the individual who chooses to use it, making it pretty good to pair with Taunt, so that way you're taking the least amount of heat possible. Now, other than the Savior has come, Super Spirit Bomb is a good option like how I spoke with your CAC that you're going to play as. It holds the opponent down really well and it confuses the AI. Very infrequently are they going to stop this attack from launching. But other than that, I don't really think that there's too many good ultimate attacks, and considering how you, at the player, wants to be getting more KOs than your enemy, you might even choose to leave your second ultimate slot blank. Now, if you find yourself in a position where you need to dedicate one or both teammate slots to a custom mentor, like I said, your options are Pan, Videl, and Hercule. Your best option might be Pan, as she has three skills that I mentioned just a minute ago. She has Dancing Para Para, Super Guard, and Backflip that you can equip. Now, Videl does also have a couple of moves that I mentioned. She's got Dancing Para Para and Super Guard, whereas Hercule has Taunt, Super Guard, and the Savior has come. So all three of these custom mentors can be made into viable options, and you can even bring along a couple of the skills that I mentioned were optimal for CACs. 
So yeah, if need be, these are the characters you can use and that's how you can deck them out. And that's all, folks. This is the best way to tackle parallel quests, at least before DLC 16. Now, when that DLC drops, there is a chance that there will be a new move or Super Soul or something that might make this strat better, but that's a bridge we'll have to cross when we get to it, if we get to it. And if it does come down to that, you can bet I will update you in a new video with that information, and I will make adjustments as necessary. But with all that being said, I think that's about my cue to bounce. I hope you found what you were looking for in this video, and until we meet again, make sure you take care. See ya!